Hey guys, what's happening? So, I just picked this up on Amazon. It was the cheapest reverse osmosis system with an electric pump. Yeah, it was super cheap. It was like a 5% discount. Link down below. It was like 150 bucks plus the discount. So it's pretty cheap, but I also bought some extra accessories. Some water gauges, extra hose. Um, so one of the things I wanted to do was actually hook this up to my refrigerator. Um, because I wanted to get, um, you know, I wanted to get the cold water from my refrigerator and also my ice cube maker. So that's one of the reasons why I got the pump, but I also got the pump for like emergency purposes and I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, because I keep a lot of extra like two 55 gallon drums of water in the backyard. Um, but in case of emergency, I can use that pump to pull water from my emergency water to, to filter it. So I've actually been thinking about this for a couple of years. Um, I'm just sick of going to the store and getting water bottles, you know, bring them into the house. You know, I always keep like one of those two and a half gallon jugs in the refrigerator. So I just prepped uh, an area behind my washer and dryer. So I'm actually going to put it over here. Just got done painting it and filling some holes. Um, yeah, we want it nice and clean back here. It's pretty messy. I haven't been back here in many, many years. So I already have an existing water line right here that goes to my refrigerator. Yeah, and I wanted to find top. a way to put it here. And I, th I thought it was like the best spot just because I have water. I have electricity for the pump. Then I also have sewer for the uh, drain. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, so if you're, if you're gonna have a pump, you need electricity. So electricity, uh, water, and sewage, <laughs> or drain. All right, so the kit didn't come, at least I don't think it comes with any uh, water pressure gauges. So I bought three different water pressure gauges, um, just because I wanna know what my inlet pressure is, my outlet pressure, and like my after pump pressure. Um, so I might have to 3D print some adapters or whatever, but I also got some hose here. Um, so I need to find a way to fish this back to my, or I, in case of emergency, I need to be able to actually take a hose and, and somehow feed it into my, um, or take water from my 55 gallon drums, which are in my backyard, and feed them back into my system. Well, I guess I forgot to mention, one of the reasons too is I, I kind of calculated um, how much money I was spending on water. And I was spending probably 60 to 70 dollars a month just on like purified water that you buy in the store. I mean, for a long time I tried, you know, getting those containers and going to, like the water store, which was 25 cents per gallon, but I mean, that's even more of a headache to have to make a special trip just for water. Plus you get the, get the factor and the gas to get there. All right, so here are the parts that came out of the box. So it actually has like, it's like a two and a half gallon storage tank, um, which I've already thought about. So I actually already have a shelf. I'm gonna probably cut down on my existing shelves and mount that to the wall so I can see it. Alright, so you put the main component, it looks like. I know it came with some spare filters too. Um, so I'm wondering if this is 16 inches apart to be able to get in some studs. You know, with, with American building codes here. Alright, so here is a closer look at the system. Um, look, this was just kind of hanging around. But there's a picture of the motor. And actually I wanted a DC motor because in the event of a power outage, I actually have a battery backup system. Let's take a quick look at my battery backup system. So I have two boat batteries that I keep on a, on a, on a peak charge right there, or like a on a float charge right there. And then I have an inverter connected to it. So in case the power goes out, I can, um, you know, I have extra power. Actually, I can, I can power the TV for days with this stuff. TV, internet. Um, so I just noticed that the, the main uh, pump was a uh, 24 volt. So what I could do is I could hook these batteries up in series to power that water filter or I could just fire up one of my generators or hook it up to this, the AC right up to this thing here. So a lot of different ways I could activate the pump. I mean, you probably couldn't, maybe, maybe didn't understand what I was saying before is that I could reverse the flow of the water. So as far as I know, this pump should be after the filtration process to give it increase the line pressure afterwards in the tank, the storage tank to increase the pressure there. Um, or just to help it, help it along, keep your pressure up. But what I could do is I could reverse this. So this would be the actual inlet feeding into the system. So I'd reverse the hose around to make this the, the feeder. So this would actually help me pull water from the, my main storage tanks. All right, there's my 255 gallon drug right there. 
All right, so here's the extra stuff that came with this. So it looks like most of these, uh, these systems are kind of, they all look exactly the same. They might just have different names or stickers on them, but they look I mean, pretty much the same. Um, I mean, the filters aren't made by this company, the Geek Pure. So, yeah, a lot of extra filters. Uh, I guess I have a name on this one. But I guess the reverse osmosis filter. See, like it's uh, the post carbon filter. So, yeah, it came with extra filters. How I'll in there. Um, so, on the. On the I'm not, I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to hook this up, but I don't think I'm going to hook it up in my house because my, my sink is a long ways away, so I have to go in the attic and run hose all the way up through there, down, up this wall, down that wall. Uh, but my, my refrigerator is right on the other side of this. So. Plus, I wanted cold water and, and it fills with ice. So, I'm going to put this this water, this spigot thing right here. I'm going to put this in the garage. So, in case I got, I want to fill up one gallon jugs. So, I'm going to keep about five or six, you know, extra one gallon jugs in here. In case of emergency or if this thing breaks, I at least have a good supply of water. All right. So, I just took a quick measurement here of my thing and kind of bugged about this. But, so it's 12 inches between the holes right there. Um, so in America, obviously, we have 16-inch stud framing. I want to get this in some frame. I want to get this in studs because this is going to be pretty heavy. I mean, already it's pretty heavy. You know, this is going to put a lot of stress on some drywall. So um, I want to make sure I get this into studs. So I think I'm going to do is put a little piece of plywood back here, a strip of plywood, and I want to get that into the studs. That way I get this thing into some seriously. I want this to be very sturdy. So I'm going to cut some plywood and I'm going to paint it, put it up there. All right, so that's cool. At least they have a diagram. They don't have a picture of the, the pop in there, but I don't like mysteries. If you're new to my channel, I usually take everything apart to see how they work because in the event of a problem, right, I want to know how these things work. So I'm not sitting there like, it, you know, when I'm, when I'm actually having problems, I'm not sitting there trying to figure out what's going on. I'd rather already know in the beginning. All right, this makes more sense now because you have the two switches. So I got a fan trying to got that plywood up here. I'm just letting the paint dry here. Um, all right, so you have a low pressure switch and a high pressure switch. That's cool. So when you hit, when you hit, when you're when you're in a low pressure situation, it will actually start will activate the pump to start pumping, right? But once it gets to a high pressure, right? Once the pressure is correct, it's got to shut off the high pressure switch. That's cool. So it's like a dual function thing. So I might not even need to reverse it. Like I thought, maybe I might have to reverse the piping. So I'll test it. I want to see like for like let's say in case the the main water goes out on like the city, right? What I want to do is I want to be able to hook, put a hose into like a dirty water source and see if it will pump up water so I can run through my filtering system, like, you know, you know, non, non city water, you know, in my own, my own water supply at those 55 gallon drums. All right. So I designed this last night. That's a double gauge mount. So it just mounts the gauges. I mean, this will fit with the Geeks Pure one, um, the hole spacing. I mean, also they don't change their hole spacing, but um, so that's going to work on that one. And then uh, it, should, it can work with other ones if you want. But might want to need to custom drill some holes, but yeah, I want to be able to see like the inlet and outlet, you know, inlet pressure, outlet pressure. But I wanted to be able to compare them side by side. All right, so if you can see this, the new inlet will be the pressure gauge and then wraps around. It goes into the inlet of the first filter. And this is the output of well, before the charcoal filter, right coming right outside of the uh, the RO membrane in here. It comes back out and it's in the pressure here before it hits the carbon filter. I mean, I could have put it over here, but I don't have a tap for that. But so I guess in case this, if this thing gets you know clogged up, I might not be able to see it. But I guess I'm more worried about this filter right here, the RO membrane. And here's the first mount on the wall. So the bracket. This doesn't seem that sturdy. Um, so what I might do is I might design some sort of support bracket that goes into the wall that keeps this up because once I get this thing filled with water, it's going to sag even more. So um, yeah, it looks like it wasn't bent right you now. Like it wasn't bent fully. Like I noticed this was kind of bent a little off too, but I ain't got the tank installed. Yeah, I don't know if I showed you that custom contoured thing I, I did here to fit my between here and the um, washing machine. So yeah, I'm still not a big fan of this hole. I might get some brackets for that. I'm not gonna do that. So um, wastewater's gonna come down here. Like when I'm all done, it's gonna be all zip tied. I have power right there. So um, come down now, like that.
It's kind of messy back there, but that's my tap on that dirty sink back there. So that's just for filling like one gallon jugs, two and a half gallons. This one's like on the refrigerator. Um, the red wire goes up and the wastewater. And then the storage tank here goes up. Um, and this is actually giving me the feed back to the refrigerator. So I have a tap in right there. And that's going to actually, I need, I just ordered a thing on Amazon, like, like a T. So it's like an adapter. So it adapts like this three eighths to, to quarter inch. So I can tap my quarter inch on it. And that's going to feed back my refrigerator ice maker and the uh, thing. <clears throat> so a lot of things I heard so far was that with an ice maker, you want to get a pump. Plus, like I said, for emergencies too. So uh, I have a way to pump water into the system. I mean, it does make me really nervous having this many connectors everywhere. Like there's a ton of connectors, things that can fail everywhere. There's probably at least 20 connectors. <laughs> Plus, even with the new stuff I added. So, um, yeah, a little nervous. I'm, I'm out. Dude, that's my little water tap. I had a little mud dabber living there. But I cleaned the pipe off first. I sanded it off. All right, here goes nothing. I mean, I have the pipe pierced. I mean, it should be pierced at this point. There it goes. I may hear the filter for the hair up in her knob. Let's see, the little pressure gauge has a little bit on the end of that here. There it goes. Looking for leaks. I try not to open up the, the tap here. Yeah, it just sounds like everything's filling up here. And I think I'm going to open the tap up. Just get the air out of the system. Alright, no look so far. Oh man, I need the pump on, but hmm. good to know. So I don't have the pump plug in right now, so there's zero PSI on the output. So I'm not getting any water here. Okay, so that's my inlet pressure right there. So I'm gonna plug in the pump right now and see what happens. Okay, here's the pump oven. Pump's on. Ooh, look at that shit. Got that spigot over here. <laughs> I can see it coming through. All right. I like a lot of sediment. Okay. Uh, also, what I thought. So I didn't have that tank valve open. Alright, so it seems like it's pump again. Yeah, I'm pretty new to these systems, so. But it is doing some wastewater, so that's a good sign. But I gotta let this tank fill up a few times <coughs> and then go back and like flush it a few times. You know, I think this pump really actually helps because I was reading the instructions and it said it takes four hours to fill a tank up. This thing filled it up pretty fast. So. The outlet side, which is connected to the same tank right here, is about uh, like about 30 psi probably. Um, inlet's a lot higher, so so I'm guessing that this thing actually has a pressure relief valve, this pump, to turn off at a certain certain point. You know, I'm not sure what pressure that is, but um, obviously somewhere around here, um, because this should actually, I would think in theory, would be close to the same, right? The inlet pressure would be the same as the outlet pressure. Um, so this valve, that, I, th I feel like this valve must be closed somehow, like this, uh, the motor valve, the pressure relief valve to that controls the motor. All right, so gonna, it says like to flush the tank a few times. So I'm gonna do that. All right, let's put those support brackets on. Show you before, I showed you before it was all wobbly. So it's the same brackets that I had, just an extra pair of shells I had in my the same exact shell that's back right here. And it's painted to white. And yeah, it doesn't move now, it's solid. 
Yeah, they should have that from that factory though, because I mean, this thing was just flipping around. You saw it everywhere, so it's not it's nice and sturdy. All right, so two just came in from Amazon. So basically, it taps. I'm basically taking three eighths. I'm tapping off a quarter inch for the refrigerator. So I'm gonna turn the water back on. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for about an hour. Let's see if this thing's processing yet. Yeah, Waste water coming out. All right, so I'm let this process for a while. Then I'll go back and uh, flush out my refrigerator. The ice cube maker. You know, I'm gonna run a couple loads of ice through it and uh, flush out the 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 water, the tap water that's in it right now. To make sure this works, I have a TDS meter that uh, tests dissolved solids. So I'm going to try one with uh, <coughs> tap water. And one with the reverse osmosis water. Take that off. Power it on. All right. 210. Thirty-six. The water looks a little, uh, <clears throat> a little foamy. So a huge difference. You know, just by looking at it, I can tell that the tap water is a lot darker. Let's see. So one ninety-one. Hold. I mean, this system is still kind of flushing itself out too. So I'm going to wait, wait, unhold and then. So this seemed like it ranged from about 8 to 10. So that's a huge improvement. Um, like I'm going to keep on testing this throughout the next couple days as I use this water. So 9. Okay, so I'm run this through the refrigerator. It's pretty good pressure. So I'm going to keep on running this until I get about the same 8, eight parts per million. All right, so this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this too, is that I wanted to get the ice. So this is actually like tap water ice. So I'm gonna run a bunch of loads for that too, to clean out the system. So right now I'm down to about 38 um, parts per million. So I'm gonna try to keep on getting that down and down and down. All right, so I'm melting ice cubes every night. So I was mainly concerned about, uh, like I hear that they're, uh, the, the cubes are smaller, like there's not enough water pressure to fill it up in time. Um, so I'm going to take a couple of these, I'm going to melt them and test the, the water quality. See that right there is kind of, looks like it's just actually broken. But the cube size seems about normal. So I'm going to melt a few of these and do a uh, solids test. All right, so for the ice, I'd like to at least be about 12. All right, nine. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I've always kind of wondered about these things for years. I've been looking at them. Fine, just got so frustrated carrying these water jugs that I decided to pull the trigger. But, um, all right, so if you want this, uh, my little gauge mount thing, I'll put that on my thing over this page, link below. Links below for all this stuff. Yeah, this was actually the cheapest kit on Amazon that actually had the booster pump. But even with the one without the booster pump, it was like 130 bucks. So they're really, really cheap. And I didn't see any difference between this one and some other brand. I'm not sure using, you know, not good filters, but I'm getting really good uh, results. I'm getting like, on average, probably about uh, eight, six to eight uh, parts per million solids. So, I've been checking for a couple days too. So, all right, pretty stoked. No more carrying jugs. Awesome.